10 Dark Harry Potter Conspiracies When you think about a series that has had a great impact on pop culture, Harry Potter, without a doubt, comes to mind. People all around the world, of all different ages, love the books and the movies once they came out. The wizarding world is full of so many wonders and adventures, so naturally, there have been quite a few conspiracies brought to light to do with the franchise. So, in today's video, we're going to be going over 10 Dark Harry Potter Conspiracies. If you do enjoy today's video, please leave a like and consider subscribing, because if you do, you could get a shout out. But with that being said, let's get into it. It seems, despite your exhaustive defensive strategies, you still have a bit of a security problem, Headmaster. Number 1. Dumbledore Saw His Family in the Mirror of Irised I'm sure you know by now that the Mirror of Irised shows whoever is looking into it what they desire most. At one point, Harry asks Dumbledore what it is that he sees when he looks into the mirror, and he deflects the question by saying that he sees himself wearing a pair of thick woolen socks. But of course, that isn't what he actually saw when looking into the mirror, or at least that's what some people think. Some believe that what he actually saw was his family, alive and happy. Of course, we'll never really know if that was true because this is only a conspiracy, but it's what many people believe. Although, I guess wanting to have a pair of nice, thick woolen socks isn't exactly a bad desire to have either. It does not do to dwell on dreams, Harry, and forget to live. Number 2. Snape's Hatred for Neville Throughout the Harry Potter series, Snape shows hate towards a lot of the children from Hogwarts. His true intentions are the ultimate twist for the novels and films because he goes on from being a suspect to being a hero right at the very end. And it's also no secret that he had a great love for Lily, Harry's mother. There's a conspiracy theory out there that suggests that Snape particularly has it out for Neville Longbottom due to the fact that Voldemort went to the Potter's house and ended up murdering Lily and James instead of going to the Longbottoms. Of course, the Longbottoms did end up getting killed, but it was by Voldemort's follower, Bellatrix Lestrange. This theory suggests that Snape is under the suspicion that if Bellatrix was the one that went after the Potters, they would have had a much better chance of surviving. Although, it is totally unfair for Snape to blame something like this on Neville himself, it's still a great conspiracy to think about. You have your mother's eyes. Number 3. Hagrid Couldn't Have Children Hagrid is a fan favorite character from the world of Harry Potter. He's the friendly half giant that goes about his days being the groundskeeper for Hogwarts, but he also takes care of many of the students around the school and numerous creatures as well. He truly is a nice guy, but there's a conspiracy out there that suggests that because he's half giant, he's not able to reproduce, which obviously means that he would not be able to have children of his own. Obviously, there is no actual evidence out there to suggest this, but it does make a lot of sense. Hagrid seems like the perfect person to have a family because, without a doubt, he would be an amazing father, but he just doesn't have any children, and that possibly could be because he can't produce them. Maybe he finds himself being so close with many of the Hogwarts students because he longs to have his own children. We don't really know, and this is just a conspiracy, but it does make me kind of sad. Isn't he beautiful? Oh, bless him, look, he knows his mummy. <laughs> Number 4. Voldemort's Boggart would be his corpse. Just in case you've forgotten, a uh, Boggart is something that turns into whatever the person viewing is most afraid of. If we think about Voldemort in this situation for a second, what he would see would be his own corpse, right? Because his biggest fear is death. This is a conspiracy that some fans came up with and it's actually been confirmed by J.K. Rowling herself. In an interview, she responded by saying, that was my conclusion, that he would see himself dead. It would make complete sense seeing as though Voldemort does take extreme steps to split up his soul into several pieces and turn them into the Horcruxes. Number 5. Voldemort Cannot Love Next up, we have another conspiracy that involves the Dark Lord Voldemort. Rowling stated in an interview that Voldemort was conceived by the influence of a love potion, so that means that he was born via fake love. So this made some fans think that maybe that's why he's unable to love like the rest of the people in the Wizarding World. I mean, after all, he is known as the Dark Lord. He is driven by madness and the fact that he wants to take over everything and shows no signs of love whatsoever. He was born into a loveless relationship, so that means that he wasn't raised within a loving environment. 
either which could explain his behavior. You're the weak one, and you'll never know love or friendship. Number six, King George and George Weasley. This next theory suggests that all the Weasleys, except for Ron, were given names of British king or queens. King George III was deaf in one ear and became king because of the death of Prince Frederick. So where this conspiracy comes into play is the fact that George also suffered from ear problems and that Fred met an untimely death as well, so George was left to carry on their legacy. This theory does fall a little flat when applying other evidence, as the brothers don't really share many personal traits, so this is either a crazy coincidence or J.K. Rowling was trying to provide a little history lesson for her younger viewers and readers. How are you feeling, Georgie? Number seven, Hogwarts is an insane asylum? If you're shrugging your shoulders at the title of this point, I would understand because it's pretty insane to assume that Hogwarts was in fact an insane asylum, but there have been some people out there that think that it could have been. The conspiracy says that while Harry was sitting in front of the mirror of Irised, he went completely mad. I mean, think about it. All the moving stairs and talking paintings, all this stuff does make Harry look a little insane. Maybe Harry was sent to an insane asylum to deal with the fact that both of his parents were dead. The person on Reddit that posted this theory suggests that Harry murdered Cedric himself because he was the only witness and nobody believes him when he says it was Voldemort. There is also the scene from King's Cross Station that involves an interaction between Harry and Dumbledore, where Harry says, tell me one thing, is this real or has this been happening inside my head? People think that maybe he's insane and Hogwarts is actually just an insane asylum, especially because Dumbledore responds by saying, of course it's happening inside of your head, Harry, but why on earth would that mean that it's not real? Is this all real? Or is it just happening inside my head? Of course it's happening inside your head, Harry. Number eight, George's missing Patronus. There's a conspiracy theory out there that suggests Patronuses are linked together, generally between soulmates, and that would explain why Ron's Patronus is a terrier and Hermione's is an otter, because terriers chase otters and we all know how the relationship ends up. This theory then goes on to say that George is no longer able to conjure the Patronus charm after Fred's death because George and Fred were soulmates. Not in a relationship way, of course, we all know that they were twin brothers, but it does make sense seeing as though Fred and George were completely inseparable and they chose to spend all of their time with each other. So yeah, this theory does make sense, but it's still sad to think that it could be true. <laughs> Number nine, Dumbledore is death himself. If you think back to the tale of the three brothers, death is the one that gives the invisibility cloak to the brother. And we all know that Dumbledore is the one that gives Harry the invisibility cloak in the first book and film. Dumbledore is also the one that gave the resurrection stone to Harry by hiding it inside of the golden snitch. And he indirectly delivers the elder wand to Harry after he defeats Draco in a duel. Although this evidence does make a lot of sense and it does seem like Dumbledore could in fact be death himself, there is one key bit of evidence that is lacking, and that is the fact that Snape and Voldemort were never greeted by Dumbledore at the end of their lives. If this had happened, this would have made this theory a lot more believable, so I'm not too sure if I back this theory 100%, but it's still one that does make a lot of sense. I have no intention of going to Azkaban. Enough of this. Take him! Number 10, Draco is a werewolf. And last but definitely not least, we have a theory to do with Draco Malfoy and the fact that he is a werewolf. Most of the evidence that would support this theory can be found in the sixth and seventh books. This is where Draco dropped his usual pranking ways and instead plunges full force into a starring role in the assassination of Dumbledore. The key point behind this theory is that Fenric Greyback bit Draco when Lucius was not able to retrieve the prophecy for Lord Voldemort. This could actually happen because Greyback is the one that bites Remus, turning him into a werewolf. Another really dark piece of evidence supporting this conspiracy is the fact that Voldemort says to Draco, maybe you can babysit the cubs, when referring to the fact that Remus and Tonks are having a child. So maybe Draco was a werewolf? I mean, in the third movie, he does impersonate a werewolf, so maybe this was foreshadowing to the fact that he was going to become one. Oh! <laughs> Thank you. But 
That is all we have time for today. 10 Dark Harry Potter Conspiracies. Please leave a like if you did enjoy, and consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you never miss an upload. But with that being said, we will see you in the next one.